The topic of prayer can be intimidating and we're not helped by people who tell us the examples of Saint whatever her name is who prays with such fervour that she ends up with two distinct grooves in the floorboards next to her bed or some great revivalist who prays with such penitential tears that he ends up with a damp problem in his room. Most of us feel that we don't pray enough. We may have started off with the best of intentions after hearing some great sermon or some great talk somewhere and so we buy ourselves a nice, beautiful, leather-bound notebook and some lovely, colourful pens and we decide to keep a prayer diary or something like that. But we still feel that we just don't get it. We just don't pray enough. We're missing out. And there's those other people that say, when they're praying for you, that it really means something. You know that, that, that it's something is happening spiritually. And in comparison, you just feel so insignificant in your prayers. Or maybe you're one of those people who just feels like you've got it sorted and the last thing you hear need to hear is somebody else talking again about prayer. Whichever camp you feel that you fall into, clearly the disciples wanted to be taught and so they came to Jesus and they asked him to teach them how to pray. You may have noticed that there's quite a difference between the two prayers that we find in the Bible that form the basis of the Lord's Prayer. Matthew's account is much fuller than Luke's and also they, they both seem to be missing a bit that we say on the end, which actually comes from the Old Testament book of Chronicles. What I find fascinating is that Luke's version is much briefer, yet almost all scholars agree that Luke almost certainly wrote his version after Matthew. And it's quite likely that Luke either had the same sources that Matthew had for his gospel or even a copy of Matthew's gospel in front of him. So why is it that Luke chooses to make his version much briefer? Well I think it's that Luke grasps that it's not about what to pray but it's about how to pray. Jesus is teaching the disciples not the exact words to repeat by rote as if they're some kind of parrot Luke is telling them how to pray. What are the things that we're to pray about? What it is that we're to say when we come to pray? And regardless of whatever Luke, the human author's intentions may have been, behind it we know is the divine author. And God wants us to pray. And he's not bothered about the exact words that we come to him with, but he does give us a model. He shows us how to pray. I think this is really important because it frees us from looking at the exact words of Jesus' prayer to what it is that's behind them. What is it that they're all about? And the first thing that we've got to grasp, the first thing that Jesus starts the prayer with is our Father who is in heaven. Our Father. The first thing that we need to grasp is focus. And our focus is not to be on prayer, but it's to be on the Father. I think the reason we get intimidated by prayer is that we're distracted. We're focusing not on the Father, but on prayer. I'm one of those people that when uh, I drive my car, I can't stand to have anything on the windscreen. And in the winter months, as you're driving along and uh, all the salt from the road sp sprays up and you get that grit all over the windscreen, I'm constantly spraying water to clean it. It drives my wife absolutely mad. But I like to have a clear vision in front of me. In the summer months, I can't stand it when all the flies and all the bugs and insects, insects just fly into the windscreen and smear all across it. And again, I'm constantly cleaning it. I want to have a clear vision in front of me. Prayer can become like the windshield. It can distract us from what we're meant to be focusing on in front of us. We're not meant to be looking at the windshield. We're not meant to be looking at prayer. We're meant to be looking at the Father. The Father is our focus. To call God our Father was a revolutionary statement of intimacy. God is referred to as Father just 14 times in the Old Testament and always in a national context. And here Jesus tells us that we can address God as our Father. To understand this, we don't need to trawl through endless books of theology, but just look at the relationship of a father and a child. Many people, this is something that they struggle with, but I've always been fortunate. It's something that I grew up with a great earthly father who showed love to me and can 
care for me and provided all that I needed. And so for me, the understanding of, of coming to God as a father is something that's natural and it's easy and I can relate to. I can remember as a child, I used to have piano lessons and um, I, was, I was terrible, I never did enough practice. And um, I remember on the way home, in the winter months, it would start, it would start to get dark. And as you're getting closer and closer to Christmas, it would become really dark as I was walking home. And I can remember one night coming home and, and being quite scared. My piano tutor lived in this big street with great big houses, with great big driveways and massive trees overshadowing. And as you walk through the shadows between the street lamps, you could hardly see a thing. And I was so scared. And in front of me came this little light. And as it came closer, I realised it was my dad. And he'd come to meet me, he'd come to protect me, to look after me. And I knew that he was with me and there's nothing else that I needed to fear. But for many people, understanding God as Father can be difficult. Maybe they've not had a good relationship with their father as they've grown up. Maybe they've not known their father. Maybe their father's been absent. But the great thing about the Lord's Prayer is it tells us what our Heavenly Father is like. We're not left to guess. It tells us exactly what he's like. But the key is understanding God as our Father. Since I've become a father myself, this is something that I've understood even more. I understand the way that children come to their fathers, the way that they ask for things. A few years ago, I remember we went to the seaside and uh, my eldest daughter didn't stop asking for stuff the whole time we were there. First of all, she wanted to go on the beach. She wanted to go down to the sea. So we went down to the sea and then she wanted to take her shoes off and then she wanted to take her socks off and then she wanted to walk on the sand. Then she wanted to be carried because she didn't like walking on the sand. Then as she came close to the sea, she wanted to go and paddle in it. And when her feet got too cold, she wanted to be picked up. And then she wouldn't walk on the beach. She had to be carried back up the beach. And then she saw that there were ice creams for sale and she wanted an ice cream. So she asked for an ice cream. And when she had an ice cream, she wanted a drink, she was thirsty. And so she just continued to ask, but she trusted that her father loved her and wanted to give her good things. And so she continued to ask. I've now got three children. And my, my two eldest, the two girls, what they love to do is they gang up and together they ask for things together. And if we're driving in the car somewhere, they're always requesting what CD we have on or what song we have on. They're always asking for things, and when the two of them together are asking in unison, as a father, my heart pulls. Notice how the prayer begins. Our Father. It tells us that we can address God with intimacy in a personal relationship, but that's one that is shared. We have brothers and sisters in Christ. Our Father. The prayer is never in the singular. The prayer that we make, the Lord's Prayer, is always in the first person plural. Our Father, give us, lead us, us, our. We have brothers and sisters in Christ. We have a new community, a new family to which we belong. And the focus, the unity of that family is found in our Father. As a father, I want to give to my children good gifts and good things. And Jesus makes the parallel. How much more does our father who is in heaven want to give good gifts to his children? To give the Holy Spirit for those who ask. And notice this. Our father is in heaven. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. He sees all that we face and all that is around us and all that we need. And he invites us to know him and to trust him and to love him. Brother Luigi Goya says that the problem with prayer is that it's too simple and we are too complicated. May we simply trust in the Father. May we not be distracted by prayer, but may we look to the Father and may we know that he is holy, that he is king, that he provides, that he forgives, that he leads well, and he wants us to trust him, to know him, and to love him.